the Joe Rogan experience. How do you think this is going to affect things like competitive athletics? Hugely. So um, right now, um, we have this problem. Someone like Lance Armstrong, who's, who is doing, he's manipulating his, uh, his body. And what he's basically doing is adding more red blood cells so that he can carry more oxygen. And people feel that that's cheating. And it's a, it's a different topic that probably everybody in the Tour de France was doing exactly that when he, when he won. Um, but what if, which will be the case, we're going to be able to sequence the people, let's say nobody's doing drugs, and we sequence all these athletes, some of them will just have a natural genetic advantage. Their bodies will naturally be doing what Lance Armstrong had manipulated his body to do. You know that's happening with a sprinter right now? Yeah. Well, that female sprinter yes. that has high levels of testosterone? Yes. Yeah. yeah. No, and, it's, and I feel really sorry for her. Yeah. But we have categories. I mean, yeah, you with your world in, in uh, mixed martial arts, I mean, I think I remember in the past there was some person who, has, who was kind of a, a borderline on, on a... a between genders and was just kicking the shit out of all of these women in cage fighting. And it's like, we have these categories of man and woman. We know that the gender identities are, are fluid, but how do we think about it when these genetic differences confer advantages? So if your body is primed to do something, um, maybe you could have like a Plato's Republic world where everybody ha fulfills a function that you are genetically optimized to do and mm -hmm. that you could imagine that being a very competitive kind of uh, of environment but what do you do for now in something like the olympics if somebody has this huge genetic advantage should we let somebody else manipulate their bodies there's a thing called gene doping mm -hmm. uh, in order to change the expression of genes so your body to act like you're as genet naturally genetic enhanced as somebody else it's complicated are they capable of doing certain physical enhancements through gene doping right now yeah like what can they do right yeah. now? No, no. So, so the way it works is so your your genes instruct your cells to make proteins. That's that's it's that's how the whole system works. So you can change genes, or you can trigger the expression of proteins. So you can get people's bodies to behave as if they had the uh, these Superior genetic genes. optimization. Yeah, yeah. And so yeah. that's why now the the World Anti Doping uh, Agency. I mean, they are now starting to look at gene doping. And this is the first time uh, that that's, that that's even being considered as a category. And then there are, have are, there people that have done that? Are there people that have done that successfully? You know, I don't know the answer to that. I know mm. that WADA is looking for it, which makes me assume that it must have done, but I haven't seen it. I've looked for right. it. I haven't seen any reports. If China there. starts winning everything. Well, China is. <laughs> so, so my, my, I wrote my, um, one of my sci-fi novels, Genesis Code was about this. So China, as you know, has their system of their Olympic sports schools. And the way it works is they test kids all around the country. So let's just say it's, it's diving. And they identify well, what are the core skills of a diver? What do you need? And then they go around the country and they test kids and then they bring a bunch of them to their Olympic sports schools. Uh, and then they, you know, they get them all involved. And then some kids are the best of those kids and then the best of those kids. And then you get with these champs. That's why China advanced so, uh, so rapidly. But what happens if they're doing that but it's at the genetic level. And there mm. are countries like Kazakhstan that are already announcing that they are going to be screening all of their athletes. So the, the science isn't there yet. So it's really, it's impossible right now to say, oh, well, I'm gonna do a genome sequence of somebody and I know this person has the potential to be an Olympic sprinter. But 10 years from now, that's not going to be the case. Wow. Yeah, it's sort of gonna throw a monkey wrench in the whole idea of what is fair when it comes yeah. to athletics. Yeah, what is fair, what is human? Right, what is human, yeah. yeah. I mean, look, it's not like people don't already alter their bodies by training, by diet, exercise, all sorts of different recovery modalities, yep. uh, cryotherapy, yeah. sauna. All of it. Um, you know, high elevation training, all these different things that they yeah. do that manipulates the human body. But it's not like it would be kind of crazy if you had sports, but you couldn't practice and you couldn't work out. Like we want to find out what a person's yeah. really like. No practice, well, no yeah. working out. No, that's, and that's yeah. the thing is like we are moving. It comes back to what we were saying before about nature. Mm -hmm. It's like we have this this feeling of nature somehow feels comfortable to us. That's what we're used to. It's all this stuff that you're talking about, they, nobody was doing that. 10,000 years ago. It's like, right. hey, I'm, I'm, I'm running after a buffalo. And, yeah. and, and, so, and so as these boundaries change, as the realm of possibility changes, 
then we're going to be faced with all of these questions. Even now, look at a sport like competitive weightlifting. They, they have these like the, the real competitive uh, bodybuilding. And you see these guys and they're, they're monsters. And then they have these drug-free guys and everybody looks like a yogi. <laughs> and they so, look, still look pretty big. They look pretty big, but not compared to no. these, these other guys. The only way to get to those freak levels is yeah. through steroids. Yeah. And yeah. so, like, how are we going to police this? And I think it's going right. to be very difficult. And so maybe we can have some kind of natural area of life. But I think that our, our model of what's normal is just going to change. Because mm -hmm. like I was saying in the beginning, we set our baseline based on how we grew up. And, and that, it seems about right. Like it seems about right to us that everybody gets immunizations. But immunizations are a form of superpower. Imagine if our ancestors, they couldn't even imagine immunizations. Mm -hmm. What an unfair advantage when you have 100 million people dying of, of Spanish flu. So we're, this, all this stuff is scary and it's going to normalize, but how it normalizes is, is that's what's at play now. Well, the world has changed so much just in the last 20 years, but it feels like this is just scratching the surface in comparison yeah. to what's coming. It was a, people misunderstand and they underestimate the rate of change. And the reason that they do that is since the beginning of the digital revolution, we have experienced a thing called exponential change. As you've heard of Moore's law, which is basically mm -hmm. computing power roughly doubles every two years. And We've internalized Moore's law, and that means that every new iPhone, we expect to be better and stronger and faster and all these kinds of things. But now we're entering in a, wor a world where we're going to have exponential change across technology platforms. And so we think about, well, what does exponential change mean in the context of biology? Well, at the very, very beginning, it's genome sequencing is, is, is going to be basically, uh, basically free. But we're going to be able to change life. And because we're on this J curve, like when you think of what's a 10 year unit of change, looking in the, in the rear view mirror, that amount of change is only going to take five years going forward and then two years and then one year. And so that's the reason why I've written this book is I, it's, we have to get that this stuff is coming fast. And if we want to be part of it, we have to understand it and we have to make our voices heard. <laughs>